Marty and I were friends in eighth grade, back just before high school. He was a clown in search of a stage, and I the strict servant of rules. His daddy worked for the road crew of town, and mine for the utilities. They lived in a shack by the flat river ground. We lived on a hill with a breeze. But somehow we stuck to each other like glue. Always found something we both like to do. Laughed our way into and over and through. More fun than trouble deserves. And he'd talk and he'd talk for block after block with stories that robbed me of sleep. Things he had done, oh, they must have been fun. But they got him in such big trouble deep. Then Marty would laugh with that funny high voice and say that I should have been there. And the look in his eye said there wasn't a choice. You're gonna catch it sometime or somewhere, boy. You're gonna catch it sometime or somewhere. Most every day he'd hitchhike to school, look for me down by the steps. Sit there so laid back, relaxed and cool, like some bookie just waiting for bets. With the first bell, we'd run to homeroom and listen for the office PA. As Mr. McFarland's cold voice of doom would name all the criminals that day. McFarland did not like Marty at all. Singled him out as he walked down the hall. He wanted to break him, make him just crawl. But you can't break a heart that's been broke. So we'd laugh and we'd laugh as we'd walk between class. No, we never could get free of the jokes. One glance from him and I'd start to grin. Explode as the teacher spoke, but Marty would do the very same crime to ensure the same punishment. Detention for two was the cost of the fine. Two comrades in confinement. We were two comrades in confinement. Oh, Marty knows the years come and go. There's an ache that just grows with your name. For those dropped from the list, whose beauty was missed, but whose heart sang in spite of the pain. Saturday mornings we go down to the tracks, run out to the dressel sometimes. Lower ourselves between the cracks, tightrope the cross beams half blind. He'd scoot over fast, why I'd take a while with a sixty-foot drop beneath my shoes. He'd chuckle and seem to say with his smile, "It ain't nothing when there's nothing to lose." I remember around midterm exam we had once before. A field trip we'd planned. Miss Spiney announced it was gonna be canned unless the guilty one came to the front. Oh, what a mess! Someone stole the test, and now we're all gonna pay. We waited and hated as the thief hesitated, and the trip just slipped away. Then. Marty stood up and walked to a desk as a lynch mob of eyes hung him high. He could not have cared less about passing her test, but she never detected his lie. No, she never detected his lie.
Near the end of the year, the word got out that Marty was likely to fail. And seeing no way to turn it about, where the boy kind of pulled in his sails. We still laugh some, though less and less, as the truth of the real sank in. He would return, and I would progress. Would not be as it had been. Well, I wanted to tell him it wasn't the end. I wanted to tell him we still could be friends. I wanted to tell him we'd laugh again. But you know, wanting don't get nothing done. We were standing in line the very last time. I ever saw Marty's sad smile, rehearsing the way on that final day we'd walk in the room single file. Then Mr. McFarlane made Marty wait and said so the whole class could hear. Why, Martin, you're not gonna graduate. Oh, I still can see Marty's tears. I still can see Marty's tears. Oh, Marty knows the years come and go. There's an ache that just grows with your name. For those dropped from the list, whose beauty was missed, but whose hearts sang in spite of the pain. Whose heart sang in spite of the pain.